This is a retouch application of a curly perm. So I'm only applying the rearranger to the new growth because I want the new growth to be straight. Hey there, welcome back to another video. And these are the products that I'll be using today. Aside from the products, there are other items such as towels, shampoo cave, section clips, shampoo comb, tail comb, rods, gloves, neutralizing bib, you name it, it's all there. These are the rods that I'll be using to achieve these curls. To start the curly perm service, I am draping my client and I'm ensuring that the towel is properly secured. Next, I go in and add the shampoo cape and I'm using a plastic cape. And this will help to prevent any product or chemical that I'm using from catching onto the client clothing and damaging it. Of course, no client is going to be happy if they come to the salon and have their clothing damaged. And it's the reason why you want to protect their clothing and that is what I'm doing. Next, I go in and I examine her scalp area to see if there's any abrasion or cut perhaps she did scratch her scalp and it is cut so we want to ensure that there is none this is how our new growth is looking she is three months post her last curly perm and she has just about an inch of new growth after examining her hair and her scalp we now go to the shampoo area to get the hair clean and I'm emphasizing the hair because my intention is not to get the scalp area clean as we want to not manipulate that area so we're only applying the shampoo to the hair itself and the reason for doing that is because when we wear a curly perm we usually use in products to keep our hair moisturized that product can cause coating on the ear shaft and seeing that we are going to be putting the rearranger on the new growth in order to get it straight, if there is product on the new growth, it is going to prevent the product from taking. And so the new growth is going to remain natural or in its natural state. And if that is the case, then of course the client is not going to happy. You are going to be disappointed also. So once we finish shampooing the hair, no condition applied, we then go ahead and towel blot the hair. I want to remove as much moisture from the hair as is possible. After using a towel to remove the moisture or water from the hair, this is how the hair is looking. And so to remove more water or moisture from the hair, then I place her under a cool dryer to remove the excess water. Then I go in after it has been dried and section the hair into four just for control. So once I've done doing that, we are going to go in and start basing the scalp. So let's do that. The base I'm using is the Revlon Scalp Shield. And this is a thin layer of oil. And I'll be basing the entire scalp area. And the reason for doing this is so that the base will act as a barrier between the rearranger and the scalp. So if the product were to go onto the scalp, it will not go directly to the scalp, but it will be on top of the base, which will prevent the product from irritating the client's skin or burning the client's skin in this instance. I also apply the base around the hairline, not onto the hair itself, but to the skin area around the hairline because these areas tend to be very sensitive. Remember, you wash your face, you wash your neck, and so all of these areas are constantly being rubbed. And so to prevent the chemical from causing any harm to these areas, I also put the base there. Of course, I want to protect my hands while using the rearranger, so I put on my gloves. Now I'm going to put the rearranger into a mixing bowl. So we don't use the rearranger product from the jar. We use a spatula to put it in the mixing bowl to avoid contamination. Once I've done that, I go ahead and I use my tail comb and I'm only applying the rearranger to the new growth. And the reason why I'm only applying it to the new growth is because in this instance, it is a retouch. So she did do a virgin application already where she did the entire hair. Now she just coming in for a retouch after three months. So we're only focusing on the new growth because the new growth is the only section that has not been straightened. To apply the rearranger, I start with the back right quadrant 
and I'm applying to the most resistant area, which usually is the crown area. Of course, not everybody resistant area is at the crown. So you must examine your clients here to make sure that you're applying the relaxer first to the most resistant area. In this case, I am applying it from the back right quadrant. And I'm going to continue in a clockwise manner and then we are going to do the left quadrant all the way around basically in a circle if you hear me using the word relaxer this is not a relaxer application as in a sodium hydroxide relaxer application in this instance i'm using a rearranger which is a part of the perm product line that I'll be using to complete this service. The rear, in the rearranger, the active ingredient is ammonium theoglycolate. In the relax that we use to just straighten our hair, usually the most abundant or popularly used active ingredient is the sodium hydroxide. And so in this case, we could refer to the rearranger as a relaxer but in this case, we would refer to it as a Theo relaxer because the purpose of this relaxer is quite different from a sodium hydroxide relaxer. In this case, the Theo relaxer is straightening the hair to prepare the hair to be curled or to be rearranged in a curly formation. So if you hear me using the word relaxer, I am not referring to a regular relax that we use just to straighten our hair and have our hair left in a straight form. But in this case, we are talking about the Theo relaxer that we use to get the hair prepared to be curled or for the cur or for the hair rather to be rearranged in a curly formation. So it is a relaxer, but in this case, it is a Theo relaxer and I'm repeating for emphasis so that if you are watching this video you'll understand the difference between the two so now I am at the last quadrant and I say quadrant because the hair was parted in four and if you notice I am using horizontal lines to do my first application so we are going to go in to do a second application so the first application I use horizontal lines on the front of the hair or the hairline I am not pacing down the rearrange or the theory relaxer onto the hairline and I'm just brushing using the comb to brush on top of the new growth at the hairline because I don't want to press the product onto the scalp area unnecessarily Now I'm going in for a second application and this time I'm using diagonal lines. Now what this diagonal line will help me to do is to see the areas that has not been touched by the Theo relaxer. And so I have the opportunity now to apply the relaxer a little bit closer to the scalp area and also to the areas that do not have any Theo relaxer. So during the first application, I stayed as far as could possibly be from the scalp area. Now that I'm doing the second application, which I'm doing with diagonal partings, I am going as close as possible to the scalp, but not necessarily onto the scalp. So if you notice, whenever I part the hair, you can see that the scalp is still clean, even though I am putting the theorelaxer so close to the scalp area and keep in mind that the scalp is also base so it has some amount of protection from this chemical so we're going to continue in the same manner right around here in a clockwise motion keep in mind also that the second application i am applying it in the same manner as i did before so the first quadrant which was the right quadrant where I apply the, the theory relaxer first that is where I go back to first to do my cross examination or cross application 
which I am looking for the areas that has not been touched by any Theo relaxer. And these areas that has not been touched by any Theo relaxer, we call these areas the holidays. So these are called the holidays. The areas that has not been touched by any chemic by any Theo relaxer is called the holidays. So we are looking for those areas and at the same time ensuring that the entire hair is covered with the Theo relaxer. And we continue all the way until we get to the front section. So the time frame that I'm working with, so do my first application and my second application is 15 minutes. So you want to work as fast as you possible can to get the product in. So that is what I am doing. And if you notice, I am not pacing it onto the scalp area. I'm still trying my best to just put it onto the new growth and I'm still not touching the areas that has already been previously perm. We're only focusing on the areas that was not perm, which is the new growth, which is just about an inch. So as we get to the hairline, of course, it's going to be touching the scalp at this time, but keep in mind that we did base the entire scalp area. So at this moment, it is going to be touching the scalp area. And of course, you can see that she's comfortable because she's laughing. So no burning around here or irritation to the scalp area. Once the application is done, this is how our hair is looking. Then I cover the hair with a steam cap and we're going to leave this steam cap on our hair for 10 minutes. Now, something I want you to keep in mind is that this tear relaxer is much milder than the sodium hydroxide relaxer. And it's the reason why we cover the hair for the 10 minutes to help the heat to get the tear relaxer to straighten the hair. Now, once the 10 minutes is up, I remove the steam cap and we are going to go in, do a little combing just to where the new growth is and we're going to smooth it out and i'm using the pads of my finger to smooth it out and we're not smoothing it over the hair that has already been processed just the way the new growth is of course we know this new growth is was an inch in its original form so it has been stretched so it's going to be perhaps an inch and a half it's the reason why it might look like I am going over the demarcation, but I'm not. As you can see, you can still see here that there is no product on the hairs that was already previously permed. For the smoothing process, I do the same thing as in the first application. So I start the smoothing process at the first quadrant that I made my first application, which is the right quadrant. And so I'm going in a clockwise position just the same way as the first application. While I'm combing the hair, I'm ensuring that the comb is not touching the client's scalp. So you don't want to push the comb so deep into the hair that it is scraping the client's scalp. So I'm ensuring that I'm not doing that. I'm only combing on top of the scalp area where the hair is and smoothing it out. Once I finish smoothing out the hair, then I take the client to the shampoo area and I remove the Theo relaxer from the first right quadrant at the back section. So in the same manner I apply the first is the same manner I remove it. So I'm using the pressure or the force of the water to remove the Theo relaxer from the hair and I'm going to do it in the same clockwise manner. While rinsing the Theo relaxer from the scalp area, I am not rubbing it into the scalp area. I am lifting the hair so that the water can penetrate through the hair and remove the Theo relaxer from off the hair and the scalp area. I am going to keep rinsing the hair until all traces of the Theo relaxer is removed. So you're going to rinse as much as possible until the product is removed. If you look into the shampoo base, you can see that there's not a bubble anymore. So we can tell that the product is being removed from the hair. We are not going to be shampooing the hair. We are just removing the product and towel blotting it after rinsing it thoroughly. And now we are going to go in 
with the booster now and this is where now we are going to start the rearranging of the hair into a curly formation I only apply the booster to the area that I'm going to be working with first. I know that some stylists, they prefer to apply the booster to the entire hair, but the booster should really be on the hair for 10 minutes. And if I apply to the entire hair and I'm not working as fast, the product is going to dry out of the hair and I'm going to have to keep reapplying the booster. So to save my product and to avoid over processing the hair, I only apply the booster to the section that I'm going to be applying the rods. The rod placement technique that I'm using is the blocking technique where every two rods, there will be a rod in between those two rod placement. And I'm using end papers on the end of the hair for control and to avoid a hook at the end or what they call a fish tail curl we don't want that because when the curl is finished and remove the rods then we'll have to cut off those little hooks that have not been curled so the end paper will help to prevent that from happening so we're going to keep adding the rods to the hair until the entire hair is completed so let's do that and keep on watching Now we are at the back section of the hair and as was mentioned earlier, you can see that you're not seeing the scalp, which means that at the end of rotting the hair, you're going to have a full curl. So you're not going to be seeing the scalp just as all the rods are laying, you're not seeing the scalp. In the same manner, when the rods are removed, you're not going to be seeing the scalp and you'll see that as we go along and get to the end of this video. As I go along, I had booster as needed to the hair. So I don't apply it to the entire hair as was mentioned earlier, but seeing that I'm at the back now, I apply it to the entire back section and I'm adding my rods as I go along. So as you can see for the retouch curly perm application, the only thing you had to the entire hair from root to end is the booster. For the tear relaxer, we only apply it to the new growth, but for the booster, I apply it to all the hair because we want to recurl the entire hair. As I get to the back, I want to ensure that I remember the rod that I placed last. So two rods that are important, the first rod and your last rod, because these are the ones that you're going to be testing to see if the hair is curled and is ready to be rinsed out. Once completed, this is how the hair is looking with the rods. So now I'm going to cover the hair with a steam cap and I'm going to leave it on for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes is up, I remove the steam cap and then I'm going to look at the last rod that I placed in the hair to see if it has a S formation. Once the S formation is there, then that is my signal that the hair is ready to be rinsed. The curl is formed and I can go ahead and rinse. While rinsing the hair, I ensure that I put the force of the water onto the rods. And as you can see there, you can see that you're seeing a lot of foam. So we do that there's still a product. Once the water is running clear, then that is a signal that the booster has been rinsed out thoroughly. So you want to rinse the hair until the water is running clear. 
Once that is done, we take our towel and we remove the excess water by towel blotting. Next, we go ahead and prepare the client to have our hair neutralized. And to do that, we put on our neutralizing bib and underneath the neutralizing bib at the front, we place cottons so that the excess neutralizer, if it were to run onto our face, then the cotton would catch the excess so that it does not go into our eyes or onto our face. And I put a towel underneath her neck so that she's comfortable while pouring the neutralizing solution. I use a mixing bowl. You can choose to use a mixing bowl, a spray bottle or a sprout bottle. But in this case, I'm using a mixing bowl and I'm going to pour it onto the hair and ensure that every rod is covered. The excess neutralizer that runs from the hair, I pour it back in the mixing bowl and I keep pouring it into the hair until it is fully saturated with the neutralizer. The neutralizer will help to lock the curl in. So say for example, if you were not to neutralize the hair, then after a while, maybe after two days, you would have no curls. So the neutralizer is there to lock the curl in so that the curl is no permanent is not going anywhere and it also helps to re-harden the hair once i finish neutralizing the hair i remove the neutralizing bib but i'm going to leave the cotton there and then i'm going to place the steam cap onto our hair i leave the cotton so that the excess will still catch in the cotton and i will leave the steam cap on our hair for at least 10 minutes After the 10 minutes is up, I am going to remove the steam cap and then we are going to rinse, 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 rinse until we see the water running clear. So in this video, I am doing a retouch application. Hence the reason why the Theorelaxa was only applied to the new growth. In a previous video that I had done, that was a virgin application so the theorelaxer was applied to the entire hair because the hair has never been straightened with a theorelaxer so if you have not watched that video i am going to leave that video in the description link below or in the comment section for you to watch and see how i do a virgin application so this is a retouch application once I've rinsed the hair, I use a towel to remove the excess water from the hair. And now we are going to go ahead and remove the rods. As you can see, once I remove the rods from the hair, the curls are snapping back in place. And as I mentioned earlier, it's important that you neutralize the hair after properly so that the curls will last. So you can see that the curls are nice and soft and juicy. And that's what you want now i know that some persons might say that you have natural hair so why would you want to do a curly perm on your natural hair for some person it makes it more manageable for them it's easier to comb and the curls are nice and soft sometimes our natural hair curls are very tight and so sometimes person just want to have it more manageable once we remove the rods from the hair we go ahead and rinse again to remove the excess product from the hair that perhaps that did not remove during the time when the rod was in there and then we use our towel remove the excess water and now I'm applying conditioner to the hair the conditioner that I'm using is a design essential moisturizing conditioner this is a nice conditioner to use as your maintenance conditioner so every two weeks or every week when you do your wash day you can use a design essential shampoo and a design essential conditioner as your maintenance products after allowing the conditioner to sit on the hair for at least 10 minutes i rinse the hair thoroughly and now i'm just giving her a little trim and look at her <laughs> i just took off a little bit just a little bit so that you know you could maintain the ends properly because you know that we we're only doing this every three months so it's just a little bit but she didn't want to have her hair cut which i wasn't doing as you can see in the video i'm just taking a little bit i respect my clients so hence the reason why i know them so just a little bit and you can see how full her ear is you're not seeing her scalp because of the block 
rod setting that I use. Now I am putting in the maintenance product that comes with the wave by design and this is a moisturizing product that will add moisture to her hair. I did allow her to sit under a warm dryer just to remove the excess moisture from her hair and this is how her hair turned out. This is how it is looking. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. Would you want your stylist to have your hair done like this? Let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.